Hello everyone and welcome to my very first video in Microsoft Flight Sim 10, which is sort of amazing to say considering how many hours I've spent with this game over the years. Uh, lately I've of course been spending much more time with X-Plane 11, but there are functions in Microsoft Flight Sim 10 that X-Plane 11 simply doesn't have. Among those are missions and the learning center. And I'm sort of going to be doing a back to basics thing, starting off with the flying lessons from instructor Rod Machado here. Uh, I probably won't, I, I, each of these has a sort of a description that I look through, but I probably won't be doing the really basic basics. I, I want to uh, go with my first solo and then move on. And the reason I've decided to uh, go through the Learning Center material is to get back to basics and get my grounding, mainly because I recently acquired a pilot log. Um, now, I'm not a real pilot by any stretch of the imagination, but I, I do want to sort of make my knowledge of how to fly a little bit more rigorous. And basically over the past years, I mean, when I say past years, like 25 years of flying flight sims, I've sort of been just having fun. I just do random things. Uh, I don't care exactly how I fly as and uh, I often crash. So, but I want to uh, give it a go like this and also log my flight time. And so, uh, well, uh, let me show you the log as it was. Okay, here we go. This is the pilot's log, and it's uh, eight to ten bucks from Amazon, and it's you know got the little entries. I don't know if you could see them very well, but just like you would expect from a pilot's log. But right up front, right up front, there is a section for certificates held. Well, I don't have any way of getting any certificates in any sort of legitimate fashion, <laughs> um, but but I'll 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 make believe I'll make believe with games, which is what I do. So that is what I plan to do. I'm going to go through these lessons and check off what I can check off, as far as certificates. But I mean, it, it's just an idea. And then after that, I'll uh, move on to perhaps doing stuff in X-Plane 11, learning specific planes in a more rigorous fashion, especially the 757, which I've got a nice study uh, study level plane for. But uh, here we go. Let me just check that I can do my first solo without any problems. If I can't, that's going to be somewhat embarrassing after all this time. Okay, so here's what it says when you click fly this lesson now, estimated time to complete 15 minutes. I should have completed all those lessons, let's hope I've done so. Uh, sky is clear, winds calm, so really really easy. Bremerton National Airport, runway 19. Instructor will communicate with me. Uh, he will give me instructions on when to take off and climb to 1500 feet. And instruct me when to fly, uh, fly around the pattern and approach the runway and land. But I will not have any help controlling the plane, thankfully, uh, but I will be given verbal instructions. F7 to lower flaps, I'm aware of. Required to maintain altitudes within 100 feet of assigned, power setting within 100 RPM as assigned, airspeeds no more than 10 knots above assigned airspeed except on takeoff, where you must rotate at no more than 10 knots above and no more than 5 knots below 55 knots. So between 50 and 65. Heading within 10 degrees as assigned, pitch within 3 degrees as assigned, bank within 10 degrees as assigned. So, I mean, it, it's actually pretty tight, right? I mean, um, we'll see how it goes. Certainly not my usual all over the place flying. Okay, well, uh, I want the virtual cockpit. Uh, there we go. Um... Okay, partner, now for the moment of truth. This is your first solo. You have the skills you need to make a complete circuit around the airport and land. I'll be telling you by radio when to turn to fly the pattern, but I won't be giving you many instructions about flying the airplane. I'd like to see you do that on your own. So I'm going to step out of the airplane now and let you fly by yourself for the very first time. But here's some last minute advice. Be sure to reduce power as I direct you to when you're abeam the threshold. Don't forget that pitch, power, and trim is your key to a good landing for landing. Notice that the heading bug is set to the runway heading. 
Through the magic of simulation, the heading bug will move to the heading I want you to fly when I tell you to fly them. So pay attention to it when I tell you to turn. All right, time to solo. So here you go. Okay. I want you to take off, climb to 1,500 feet, sort of and maintain 80 knots during your climb. Okay, 1,500 feet, maintain 80 knots during climb. Okay. Push the throttle in more. Don't worry, don't worry, I was getting to it. I do have it on hard difficulty, there's no auto rudder or anything like that. Okay. Continue your climb to traffic pattern altitude. When you level off at 1500 feet, reduce your power to 2200 RPM, which will have you fly in the pattern at about 85 knots. Bank the wings less. Yeah. Speed up. Turn right more. Jeez, man. There's a stiff wind against me right now, actually. Or at least it feels that way. Maybe it's just a torque. Okay, that's 80 knots. Yeah, there is some wind. I mean, I think there's wind. They said calm and clear and everything. But... Well, that's 1,500 feet. Okay, it looks like you've leveled off. So turn left 90 degrees to a heading of 100 degrees using a 20 degree bank. You're too high. Descend. Yep, yep, yep. 20 degree bank. Descending. You're too high. Descend. Oh boy. I'm got a bad time for this. Okay, staying on heading one hundred. It's time to make another left turn. Turn 90 degrees to the left and fly parallel to the runway. Opposite the direction we'll be landing. You're looking good. Okay. Bank the wings less. I hope they give me like points after this. I'm definitely gonna have to do it again. This is too rough. This is not acceptable. But this is literally my first time trying this. Unless I tried it like 10 years ago, so I did not know exactly how it was going to feel. Okay, you're beam the runway threshold, so apply 10 degrees of flaps, maintain your heading, and descend to 1300 feet. Now don't forget to use the trim as needed. Well, we better cut throttle if I'm going to descend and increase flaps. Lower your flaps. Yeah, yeah. I want to make sure we're in okay flap territory, bud. Now it's time to make another 90 degree turn to the left. So turn left to a heading of 280 degrees. Now it's time to make your last okay. 90 degree turn to the left. Time to so turn, turn to the runway. To heading of about 190 degrees and then make adjustments to line yourself up with the runway. Okay, okay the well. runway is in front of you and it's time to show me how well you can land this airplane. You're too high. Reduce power. Yep, reducing power. <laughs> yep, definitely too high. You're too high. Reduce power. No, yep, yep. Don't worry about it. Start your descent and line up on a good glide path using the poppy. So come on down here and pick me up, and if you show me that you can land safely, I'll award you with your solo certificate. Well, after all the mess I've been making, I don't deserve that just yet. Wow, there's a lot of 
Oh, three pips. Oh, four. Dang it. Slow down. Well done. He didn't really specify any door. RPMs. You did it all by yourself, and bandages, splints, and paramedics were involved. Could show. Yeah, so I don't know what they meant by keep the RPM within a hundred of uh, specified. He didn't. He didn't really specify anything. Well, okay. Well, you you can't see this right now. Let me go back to display capture. It says first solo flight, and it uh, wants me to type my name here okay successfully accomplished a first solo flight his or her shirt tail has been cut off in commemoration of this achievement as is tradition you can even print it but I think they should be a little bit harsher with me let me try again okay here we go again and I want the virtual cockpit Woo. Uh, where's, where okay, am I? partner. Now for the moment of truth. This is your first right. solo. You have the skills you need to make a complete All right. circuit around Let's the airport. Alright, let's try and not land. have any I'll warnings from this radio time. When to turn to fly the pattern, but I won't Last be time I got a lot of warnings about flying the airplane. I'd like to see you do that on your own. The thing is, they don't give us much time to line up with the runway. It's actually pretty close to runway, and he has me turn too early for the runway, which is weird. So push the throttle in more. Oh, I didn't... Well, I won't count that particular warning. Okay, rotate. Okay. Continue your climb to track the pattern altitude. When you level off at 1,500 feet, reduce your power yeah, early on to 200 RPM, which will help you climb to keep the pattern at about 85 knots. Pulling steady. Good. On oh, 80 knots, 1,500 feet. Need to keep within 10 degrees of the heading bug. Keeping the speed is fine. That's not a problem. And if I really want to be good about it, I should probably decelerate when we're within 100 feet of 1,500. Push the throttle in more. Oh, no, nope, he doesn't want that. Dang it. Turn right more. Dang it. Probably overthinking things here. Okay, it looks like you've leveled off. Yep. So turn left 90 degrees to a heading of 100 degrees using a 20 degree bank. 20 degree bank. Confirmed. Let's not climb. Let's accelerate just a little bit. Okay, right there. There we go. That was nice. That was nice. It's time to make another left turn. Turn 90 degrees to the left and fly parallel to the runway. Opposite the direction we'll be landing. Okay, 20 degree bank. You're looking good. Thank you. Bank the wings less. Oh, sorry. I uh, overshot a bit. Now it's pretty steady. I'm not even holding the control stick, though I probably ought to. Okay, you're beam the okay. runway threshold, so apply 10 degrees of flaps, maintain your heading, and descend to 1300 feet. Now don't forget to use the trim as needed. Got it. Trimming. And speed we need up. more speed. Sorry, sorry. Well, this flight is still far from perfect, unfortunately. I honestly don't know how picky they're they really are, I shouldn't say picky. I mean but in real life, of course. 
there ought to be more expectation of precision. Now it's time to make precision. another 90 degree turn to the left. So turn left to a heading of 280 degrees. Now it's time to make your last 90 degree turn to the left. So turn left to a heading of about 190 degrees and then make adjustments to line yourself up with the runway. Okay. Uh, uh, Bank the wings more. Yeah, yeah. He's gonna bug me, but I really ought to continue in this direction a little bit longer. Because at the 20 degree bank angle that you see here... Oh, we are actually lined up very well. We're really close. Start your descent and line up on a good glide path using the poppy. It's tough to so line up with a good glide path when you have me turn towards the runway you with your solo that quickly, you know. I'm just saying. You could give me a little bit more time to line up with the runway and everything. Oh, there's no way to do it nicely here. Oh, there's, there is wind. All right. Well, well done. Congratulations on your first. Solo. I guess I'll have to take you that for all now. By yourself, and bandages, splints, and paramedics weren't involved. Good show. All right. Well, I've assumed that I've got my student pilot certificate. I'm moving on to the private pilot section. Actually, on a totally different day now. I'm recording. I uh, decided to take a bit of a break after my first solo, if you will, and now I'm going to move on to stalls and we're going to go through the private pilot section. I'll continue on with instrument pilot, commercial pilot, and airline transport pilot in subsequent episodes. But uh, I've already uh, taken care of the taxiing bit. It wasn't a full lesson anyway. So here we go with stalls. So here's the theoretical information. And uh, what I'm going to do is, I, I don't exactly know how the lesson is prepared, as far as stalling, is the is the instructor, Rob Machado, going to stall the plane and have me recover? I don't know. Let's find out. A stall in an airplane is not the same thing as when the engine in your car stalls. And about the only thing they have in common is the name. When we talk about stalls in an airplane, we're talking about the wings losing their ability to generate lift. When that happens, we are no longer a beautiful bird soaring amongst the clouds. I want you to slow the airplane and stall it, then recover. Reduce the throttle to flight idle and maintain 4,500 okay. feet to enter the stall. Slowly allow the airspeed to decay by increasing the pitch. Okay. Pull back on the stick to slowly increase the airplane's pitch. The idea is to slow down but maintain altitude as a means of entering the stall. As soon as the stall... There's the stall warning. So okay. let the nose down and apply full power. Now raise the nose above the horizon for just a second to gain a little altitude, then resume straight and level flight. Well, that was... I mean, this is a Cessna. It's not going to stall that badly. Speed up. Yeah, yeah, I've got a full throttle. I mean, uh, I, I'm just... Okay, I'm, I'm speeding up. Okay. Push I mean, the throttle in more. All right, all right. I was going to throttle down because we we're approaching 100 knots, but all right, all right. I think we've recovered already, bud. But anyway, uh, yeah, I've had worse stalls. <laughs> I've had much worse stalls than that. That was not that was not a serious stall. Congratulations. You did your first unassisted stall recovery. What happens if you stall with full power already applied? Let's say that you've just lifted off from an airport and are climbing with full power, as you normally do in an airplane. Suddenly, you find a big bumblebee in the cockpit. You're distracted and forget to fly the airplane as you swap the critter with both hands. <laughs> of course, all your flailing in the air means you're not paying attention to the airplane and it stalls. This Oddly, is more likely when stall. I'm not in a real what aircraft. In a... Simple. Reduce the wing's angle of attack to less than its critical value lower the nose to an attitude less than climb attitude. Once the airplane is no longer stalled, 
you can recover back to climbing attitude. Now don't worry about touching the throttle since full power is already applied. Establish a climb at 75 knots with full power. Make sure you trim for this condition too. Okay. Trimming. So yeah, I mean, of course, uh, since I'm flying a flight simulator, if there happened to be some bug in here, it's actually more likely that I go and try and swat it and, you know, lose control of the aircraft, then if I was actually flying the real thing, I'd now, probably be very... Now, the nose high enough to exceed the critical angle of attack. This simulates the attitude the airplane may default to when you're distracted. Bank the wings less. Uh, You'll know when the airplane stalls because yeah. the stall... Recover okay. from the stall by lowering the nose sufficiently to decrease the angle of attack. When the airplane is no longer stalled, raise the nose and resume your climb. Be sure to avoid a secondary stall by not raising the nose too fast or raising it beyond the normal climb attitude. Okay. There you have it. Yep. Remember, pilots must recover from the departure stall by reducing the angle of attack first, then pulling back on the joystick to re-establish the climb. Okay, well that was... That was easy enough. Okay, uh, steep turns. Solo flight steep turns. Well, let's take a look at the lesson. I like steep turns, so do I. The tough part. Here's where pilots often get themselves into trouble. When maneuvering for landing with power at idle, they make steep turns to align themselves with the runway. Yep. <laughs> Given their slow speed and steep bank, the airspeed and stall speed converge. In other words, when in a steep turn, the stall speed increases because of the increasing g-force and the airspeed decreases because of the increasing drag. When the airspeed and stall speed meet, the airplane stalls. Okay, so doing the steep turn lesson solo now. Hopefully there's still some instructions to verify that I'm going to be doing it right, but maybe not. Well, anyway, I'll have you guys to verify, so here we are. Let me make sure it's trimmed out. Uh, it looks like 4,000 feet. And 100 knots is what we want. And I need to keep it at 4,000 feet within 100 feet. And do a full turn at a 45 degree bank angle. That's 45. Actually, it should be a little bit more. Uh, whoop, whoop, too low. Okay, turn him back to level. Not right on the dot, but within the tolerances that they specified. So that was a solid one. I kept within the 100 feet. I kept within the velocity, within 5 knots. And we ended up where we needed to end up. Um, let me uh, descend back down to 4,000 and I'll do it to the right this time, just to uh, have symmetry. And then we'll call this one taken care of. Okay, uh, close enough. So now to the right. I started a little bit high this time. Okay, I didn't start out properly that time, and I didn't do that very well. So, one more time, to the right. Alright, uh, nope, nope, a little bit more trimmed down. And that looks pretty good. Rolling to the right. Wow, that's not how I want to go. Okay, that's better. Get 
back to where we were supposed to be. And that time I held it within 100 of 4,000, I'm pretty sure. Okay, yeah, I'll call this bit done. Alright, VOR Navigation. Have you ever been so lost? Uh, well, I've, I've been lost in general. Uh, requires two things, airborne VOR equipment and a ground transmitting station. Okay, okay, and basically we're just going to fly over the VOR with the correct course. Your course within 5 degrees is assigned, roll out on a specific heading within 10 degrees, and altitude within 300 feet of assigned altitude. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to use the navigational aid called VOR. VOR is short for Very High Frequency Omnidirectional Radio Range, which is a mouthful. As you learned in ground school, VORs are radio aids to navigation. To use the VOR, you tune the frequency for the VOR you want to use in the VHF nav radio and listen to the Morse code identifier. Once you have verified you have the correct station tuned, the VOR indicator will tell you where the airplane is relative to the VOR station. We're about six miles south of the Payne VOR station. How do I know I'm six miles away? Because the Payne VOR also has DME. DME stands for Distance Measuring Equipment. The name kind of says it all, doesn't it? How it works is best described as magic, and what it does is even better. Best described as magic. It will magic. tell us our distance from the VOR, our ground speed, We've got right and here. how long it will take us to get there. The DME indicator is on the upper right-hand corner of the instrument panel. Upper right-hand corner, panel really? three red numbers and a switch marked N1 and N2. The switch allows us to measure our distance from either nav radio 1 or nav radio 2. The I first number don't is know the distance what the he station. thinks we should be looking the at, but is our ground speed pretty sure to the that's what I want. And the third is the time it would take us to get there. Back to the VOR. There's region. also no third, so... We want to continue so. northbound on the 360 degree course Apparently he's talking about different planes. So I'll set VOR number one to 360. Okay, too far to I'm the left. I'm new control of the airplane. Ready? Maintain an altitude of 4,000 feet. Where necessary, make small corrections to keep the vertical needle centered in the VOR1 indicator. Now, we can't deviate course. too far from north, otherwise he's going to get irritated, I bet. And I have to make sure to maintain altitude and speed. Turn left more. Uh, see, he says I'm too far left, and he says turn left more because I'm not going north right but I know from the VOR indicator that I actually need to be a little bit further right but he's not gonna like that for a while turn left more yeah 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 okay now as things get all get lined up remember to fly towards the needle to get it to center the yeah needle I know it's more sensitive as we get closer now to we the can station, go so to make small corrections okay there we go. Uh, back to north, please. You're too high. Descend. Oops. That was a fault. Caught a bit of lift there. Wow. There, there, there's actually some wind. They keep That's telling me winds are calm. Alarm. Continue outbound on the three six zero from the station. Okay, three six zero is in the I mean, I guess winds could be You're a lot less calm. Descend. I know, I'm I'm working on that. Okay, now back to... Oh, I've gone too far to the uh, right. Go. And pitch up, pitch up, pitch up. Now oh, that we've passed the station, we passed it. Notice that the indicator still reads 360. Yep. But the triangle in the bottom center now points down. This means we're heading outbound from the station on the 360 degree course. Right. So now what do I do? Uh, maintain for three miles. Okay. 
think there are certain limits, like how many pips. Since that's not going well, I'm going to end this lesson now. Oh. I'd like to suggest that you take this lesson again so we can practice these important piloting skills some more. Wow, I didn't think he would reject me like that. Okay, so there are limits. There are limits. Uh, apparently, I deviated too far and he's kicked me out. That's good. That's good. That's how it ought to be. All right, so I have to do it better. Okay, so let's try this again, and I've learned a few things. First of all, uh, beware the red text appearing. Red text means you're approaching In this disqualification. Lesson, we're going to learn how to use the navigational aid called And I'm going VOR. to prepare for VOR that updraft, for the thermal. High frequency omnidirectional radio range, which is a mouthful. As you learned in ground school, VORs are radio waves. I actually did this one more time and did it properly, but I forgot to record. I thought I pressed record, but I didn't. And listen to the Morse code identifier. Once you have verified you have the correct station tuned, the VOR indicator will tell you where the airplane is relative to the VOR station. I'm giving you control of the airplane. Ready? Okay. Maintain an altitude of 4,000 feet. Where necessary, make small corrections to keep the vertical needle centered in the VOR1. Now we really need to point. turn quickly. See, it's the yellow text turn right now. More. That means uh, we're, we're, we've got a warning, basically. Okay, and now we have to turn back. I'm not going to be too concerned about uh, how sharp my turns are. Just so that we get this done. Now, we know that we're going to have that updraft, so I'm going to prepare for that right now. Remember to fly towards the needle to get it to But center. not so that we are more, more than 100 away from the, the target station, height. So make small corrections. Here, here's the turbulence, and you can see the vertical speed going up, and that's because of a thermal here. So, but this time I have successfully prevented it from knocking me up too much. And the text is white, which is clear. After we cross the VOR, continue outbound on the 360 degree course from the station. Turn oh, left more. That's a yellow text there. But that's good. I'm glad that there is, you know, some accountability, if you will. A sort of point system. And that it's not just going to take whatever nonsense I'm going to be doing and still allowing me to get a certificate or something. That would not be good. I want to make sure that this is somewhat legit, if you will. I mean, as legit as it could be. Okay, we're passing over right now. Speed up. Yeah, and it looks like uh, it cares about the speed too, so. That's good, good, good. If you hear some tapping, that's me adjusting the elevator trim. In flight sim, I do that with I want the keypad. You to turn west now. Maintain four thousand feet. Normally, I'd use the hat switch for elevator trim, but for flight sim, I'm used to using the keypad. So I've kept, and that's the default. So I've left the hat switch on, controlling the view. Sometimes you'll hear the throttle seem to go up and down. Like right here, the RPM is going up. I'm not making the RPM go up. So I don't know why. Sometimes it seems to have increased RPM all on its own. I don't remember that as a quality of this plane, but who knows. Okay, I seem to be trimmed well here, though going too far to the south. Okay. Okay. Time to head south. Time to turn. Turn left heading 180 and maintain 4,000 feet. Use 20 degrees of bank in the turn. 20 degrees of bank. Okay. We'll fly this way for another minute or so until we close in on the 090 degree course. Speed up. Except for speed. Yes. That, that did dip down. Make a 30 degree bank turn to the southeast to a heading of 30 degree bank turn. Degrees. I, I can't even. Well, okay, I guess course. I can go to 30 degrees. 
in time, but it's like, by the time I get to 30 degrees, I have to straighten out again. I'm not entirely sure what the... Well, I guess it's so that it's a little bit more pinpoint. Okay, so we are going to try and catch the VOR course heading 090. Okay, we can see the VOR track coming in. I should keep to 135 though, we're not turning yet. Okay, now... Turn, 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 turn. Yep, we're too far. And we ought to correct that quickly, otherwise those letters are going to turn red. Okay. There you go. We're now on the 090 degree course heading inbound to the Payne VOR just Very nice. Point. That's it for VORs. You now know how to navigate the highways in the skies. Wish I was allowed to tune it myself, but okay, not bad. Okay, so there's no solo bit for that one. Uh, the next one, there's traffic pattern, and there's a lesson, and then a solo flight. I'll probably just handle lesson on my own, and then uh, record and show you the solo flight. And then finally, there's air traffic control and the check ride. In this lesson, you're going to learn how to fly in the vicinity of an airport. There's a method to the madness of approaching an airport. It's called the traffic pattern, and it helps keep airplanes from running into one another. Okay, here we go. Actually, since the solo flight, this is the first time I'm actually taking off. Okay, we're on the departure leg. Yep, so we are. Bank the wings less. I know, but there's a little bit of a wind here or something. And as I recall, we're supposed to climb at 80 knots. Let's try and do that to 1,500 feet. Okay. When we reach 1,100 feet, I want you to oh, make when a 90 degree we reach left turn to the east, which is a heading of 100 degrees. Okay. When we reach 1,500 feet, level off and accelerate to about 100 knots. Okay, turning 20 degree, 20 degree. Okay. Okay, that's zero. Okay, good job. About 100, now we're on 100. the crosswind leg. We'll fly this for about 30 seconds, then turn left onto the downwind leg. 30 seconds. When we've reached 100 knots, pull the throttle back to about 2400 RPM. 2400. Speed up. Start a left turn to zero one zero. There's hardly any for the downwind leg now. This will take us parallel to the runway, about half a mile east. You're too high. Descend. Yeah, yeah, I'm too high, all right. Really, I think 2400 is... Oh, it's actually You're too crept high. up. Descend. Turn um, right more. I went too far. I really need to go down here. Oh, that was so sloppy. If you look out the left window, you can see that we're about 45 degrees out from the end of the runway. Turn okay. left to start the base leg. Roll out from your turn on a heading of 280 degrees. Okay, turning. I'm really too high though. If I was really flying this without any instructions, I would probably be descending. Just saying. Let me just at least slow down. Fly this heading until we're almost even with runway 19er again. Reduce power to 1500 RPM and add 10 degrees of flaps. Start 10. a descent of about 500 feet per minute. Turn left to line up with runway 19er. Okay, 500 feet per minute, 1500 RPM. Oop, that's a little bit too low. Reduce the power again, and let's slow down some more in level flight. When the airspeed reaches 75 knots, add another 10 degrees of flaps. Well, it's already 75. This is the final approach leg. Go ahead and set up for a regular landing. Too high, yeah. Lower your flaps. Lower your flaps. You're too high. Reduce power. Don't forget to set the flaps at 30 degrees and remain on the glide slope. 
Okay, we are too high. At least he gave me a little bit more room this time. Okay, there's the glide slope. I'm too low now. And I need to throttle up. I'm way too low. Dang you, glide slope. And there's something pushing me to the left. That would be wind. We're almost there. Reduce power to idle, keep the wings level, and hold the nose okay, just a bit go. above the horizon until Too touchdown. Too high. All right. There we go. No, nope. don't be too high. Pull the throttle back more. Okay. And there's a nice lot. Nice job. Check that the power is at idle, and press the period key to activate the brakes. Come to a complete stop on the runway. Turn left more. Okay. Parking brake? Release the parking brake. Oh, okay, fine. That's the traffic pattern. Fun, isn't it? A lot goes on in a short period of time. If you were to retract the flaps right after touchdown, set full power and take off again, this would be called a touch and go. Lower your flaps. Okay, so I think I will probably include the guided traffic pattern lesson and not the soul fly because the soul fly was rather boring without him shouting at me. I can say that on, while on the guided one, I was way too high on the landing. On the solo flight, I ended up being a bit too low, so I overcorrected, basically. And uh, I think it was marginally smoother altogether. But anyway, still, more practice, probably necessary. Let's try this air traffic control one. Not much of, by way of information here. Usually it's a really long lesson, but... Okay but they just want me to use the learning center air traffic control thing but we'll just fly the lesson 25 minutes okay we actually have to start at one airport and go to another if you're comfortable with flying the airplane we can spice things up a bit the air traffic control system will add a lot spice of spice things to up we're sitting in the ramp at Renton Field near Seattle Washington in this lesson we'll taxi take off and land at another airport while communicating with air traffic control. Now you've done your homework, right? Yeah. Press the accent key or the scroll lock key to display the air traffic control window. The air traffic control window appears with a menu of messages. Press accent or scroll lock again and the air traffic control window hides. You can display or hide the window anytime you want. It will automatically appear when messages are sent to you from air traffic control. You know how to display the air traffic control window, so if it's hidden, display it. Note that the first line in the ATC window reads, choose an option for rent and ground. Below that, you have two choices in the menu, but I don't want you to choose either of these just yet. Oops. A great tool in flight simulator that will help you manage the radios is the auto-tune feature. Okay, now that you've tuned the ground frequency, notice that you have new options in the menu. When you select an option, you'll hear the pilot okay, request. Okay, I'll select that. Okay, I'll select that. Okay, I'll select Taxiway A. Okay. Okay, I, I did that. We've got the okay, so let's taxi to the north end of runway 15. It's to the left. Thanks for telling me it's to the left because I didn't really see a particular sign. When you get to the runway, stop just short of the runway and select Request Takeoff VFR. I'm deliberately not using progressive taxi. I feel that during learning it's cheating. I am on A, but since I'm supposed to use A to get to the runway, I'm not supposed to use any of these other little pathways. Okay, A is turning to the right here. Okay, acknowledged. 
and control right bracket. The menu now reads, currently no message to transmit to Renton Tower on 124.7. As soon as you're off the ground, however, you have two messages to choose from. One, request touch and go. Two, request full stop landing. You could use either of those if you wanted to, to come back and land at Renton right away. I'm going to take control and fly around for a bit while you drink your coffee. Oh, thank you. I actually have coffee. Okay, I've let go of the control. You better not crash the thing, instructor. How did he know I had coffee? Well, he could engage in some small talk. Ah, cars. Nice to see cars on the roadways as usual. That's a heck of a bumpy roadway, though. You should see Mercer Island ahead of you now and the city of Bellevue slightly to the right. To Before the you get right. to the north end of Mercer Island, the tower controller is going to tell you that you're leaving the Renton airspace and that you should change frequencies. Okay, tuning Seattle approach. And... Okay, I better do control right bracket now. The controller told you to squawk. No, that doesn't mean you should flap your wings and make chicken sounds. It means that the numeric not. code approach control they would get annoyed. should be dialed into your transponder. The easiest way for you to do that is just let He didn't auto actually tell me to squawk. You. Press 1 to acknowledge the squawk code, and it's done. I guess I should request flight follow. Seattle approach, Cessna, November 760, Papa, Mesa, ah, here we go. Cessna, Skyhawk, 4 miles north of Whiskey 36, request flight following. Okay, acknowledge. And then it should change on my transponder. You know what? Let's just close the air traffic control window for now if you want. Press the accent key or the scroll lock to close the ATC window. That beautiful lake below us is Lake Washington. At the north end is Kenmore Air Harbor. I'll just let you fly in silence for a while. Okay, well, Rod has sure flown us a long way. I haven't been listening to anything because he hasn't been saying anything. On the bright side, it's not a bad view. We are very obviously approaching an airport. Shouldn't we have communicated with air traffic control a little bit more by now? I would think so. We are, like, directly over the field. <laughs> I feel like we ought to be doing something. Oh, and there's a sort of thermal leaf thing. Turbulence, whatever. I get the strange feeling. I mean, I'm always prepared for a bugged lesson, let's face it. So far, it's been good, but... You never know. I mean, just go outside the parameters of the lesson and whatever conditions they set can't adjust around that. To be honest, unless there's some weird surprise here, I think I've got air traffic control as far as how Flight Sim implements it pretty much down. I've used it before. This is nothing new to me. So I think I'll just move on. You'll have to forgive me, but this is this is not going to be it's just taking too long. I have no idea whether it's actually going to have me do something or not. So yeah, uh I I don't know about that air traffic control lesson, but I think I know how to use it. So let's just do the main thing, which is the check ride. She complete all private pilot lessons and solo flights. Okay, check ride test skills learned in the private pilot lessons. Start on the ground at Bremerton. Demonstrate takeoff, turn, steep turn, pattern entry, descent, landing, breaking to a stop at the Tacoma Narrows Airport. Upon successfully demonstrating these skills, we will receive a private pilot certificate. And I will get to jot that down in my pilot's log. And I will also jot down the other uh, time that we have logged as well. Not much. I cleared the log ahead of time. 
Uh, the date is not correct, obviously, as and the time is not correct, but yeah. Anyway, let us proceed with the main thing. And that's where I'll end it for this video. My my joystick is idle. You're ready for the big step, the check ride. Ooh, an examiner Complete who is not my instructor. Complete all the maneuvers and you'll receive your certificate. We're oh. on runway 19 at Bremerton National Airport. Serious examiner. I want you to do a normal takeoff, then climb on runway heading to 2,000 feet. Next, you'll do a steep turn, then fly to the Tacoma Narrows Airport. You'll enter the pattern on the downwind leg, turn base, turn final, and land at Tacoma Narrows. I won't do any of the flying for you. It's all up to you. But Rod wouldn't have sent you for your check ride if he didn't think you were ready. Ready? I don't think he knew Let's me. Let's go. Okay, here Take we go. Take off and climb to 2,000 feet. Okay, now I'm nervous. It's not even Rod anymore. And Rod already makes me nervous. I hope at least the uh, examiner is going to give me some red text if I'm going out of bounds or something. I don't know. Tough to say. And in real life, of course, examiners don't, like, warn you or anything, right? I wonder if she knows that Rod did not tell me how to tune a VOR and just tuned it for me. Okay, and let's make sure we trim out at 2,000 feet properly so that the rest of the maneuvers are easier. Good job. Thank you. I haven't actually Make a left off turn on. to heading 090. Yeah, I haven't really settled it down yet, but okay. 20 degree turn. Oh, too far. Good job. Okay, it's time for the steep turn. Check for other airplanes by pressing the four and six keys on your numeric keypad. Four and six keys? I don't think those do what you think I do. Make a 360 what? degree anyway. steep turn to the left. Okay, steep turn. Uh, okay. Remember, you started out at 90. Remember, you started out at 90. I don't know if I'm steep enough. Okay. Leveling out. Well, that was pretty successful. At least as far as maintaining the altitude and speed while turning. Good job. Okay, she seems pleased. Turned. I want you to turn to a heading of 110. We're one, about one, eight zero. miles away from the Tacoma Narrows Bridge. Famous bridge for some not so savory reasons. Well, I mean, that one was replaced. But. Okay, I think I need to trim up a little bit. Okay, my hand is off the control stick and it looks trimmed. Finally, properly trimmed. <laughs> She didn't give me much time to trim it to my satisfaction before. Okay, I'm guessing we're going to have to fly a little bit to get to the next airport. I want you to set up for entering the pattern and landing at Tacoma Narrows. Normally, I'd have you do a 45 degree entry into the pattern, but for this check ride, just enter on the left downwind leg for runway 35. Traffic pattern altitude here at Tacoma Narrows Airport is 1,300 okay. feet. Descend at your discretion to 1,300 feet prior to entering the downwind leg. Increase speed. Well, we seem to get the yellow text. Let's see if... Oh, turn. No, still wants it at 110. Still wants us at 110. Okay. 
so no heading change has been approved yet. Okay. I must not be so autonomous. Oh, well, I'm, I'm at 1,300, so I'm just waiting for clearance to turn away from heading 110. Interesting she doesn't have me use the ATC. Would think that was an important skill, but... Turn okay. right to heading 170 and look for the airport up ahead to your left. Okay. It's a 20 degree bank angle. Oh, there's the bridge. Well, I see the airport. Land on runway 35. Okay. Okay, so landing on runway 35, we're going 170. That is okay. You will demonstrate proper landing skills. And this time I get to decide exactly how far away from the runway I want to be before starting to land, so that's nice. As far as making the glide slope smooth and decelerating properly. But let's not deviate from 170 here. I'm awful close to runway, so it's going to be a sharp turn towards it. If I can deviate a little bit to the left, that's fine. As long as the examiner does not find that out of bounds. Well, this is... Assuming I'm doing this right, this is a lot easier than I expected it to be, so... We're a little bit high. Let's idle it now. feel like there's going to be any nasty surprises here. Oh, please don't let me stall the plane on this approach. Ooh, and let me land on the runway too. Oh man, I'm going left. Oh, I stall, I stall, I stall. I stall, I stall again. Oh, I'm not even landing on the runway. Ah, uh, that sucks. Let me see if she's going to take it, though. If I, like, land over here. I mean, for science. Okay. I've landed. Congratulations, you're now a flight simulator <laughs> private pilot. Oh, God. Apply the brakes and bring the airplane to a complete stop on the runway. Done. Oh, God. Well, oh, oh, yeah, I need more practice. That was horrible. <laughs> oh, look, here we go. Well, all right. Well, I'm not, I'm not going to put you through that pain again. So I'll probably do it one more time on my own. But uh, as far as Flight Sim 10 is concerned, FSX thinks I am a private pilot now. So there you have it. Okay, so um, maybe I should just spend a little bit of time as a private pilot in flights uh, in uh, X-Plane 11 flying the Cessna around there. We'll see. Maybe maybe that's where I'll do my makeup course for that particular check ride. We'll see. Anyway. I don't know if this is of any interest to anybody, but um, I'm just going to proceed as is, and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy the video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.